So this happened when I was roughly 10 years old or so. The house I grew up in had some type of strange energy to it. And every so often, things would happen there. This is something that I still think about every so often. This is just really strange to me and I can't explain it myself. I had an eye dog. If you don't know what they are, they're these little electronic speakers that resemble a dog. You could plug your MP3 player into it and it would dance to your music and the face would light up different colors and it would bark. And to turn it on or activate it, you pushed its nose. It was really cute, but it only entertained me for so long. I had had it for years and it was collecting dust on my windowsill. I hadn't played with it or turned it on in years either. I honestly thought the batteries were no good by then either. Me and my brother, who must have been around seven at the time, were in my bedroom watching YouTube on my laptop. Across the room from the dog in question and not in reach at all. I believe we were watching scary videos so the vibe in the room was already spooky. All of a sudden, my dog starts barking and moving its head around as if somebody had just pressed the button on its nose to turn it on. I remember me and my brother just looking each at each other with horrified expressions and the next thing I knew, we were zooming out of the room without looking back. I didn't go back to my room for a few days after that because nope. I still to this day don't have an explanation for it because even if my brother had messed with it prior for some reason, I would definitely have noticed it moving and barking beforehand and it wouldn't have just randomly started up the way it did. This happened the summer before I started seventh grade and middle school. Now I'm 29. I remember this pretty well because in the first week of seventh grade, we were asked to write anything about our summer vacation for a writing prompt. So I wrote about my weird encounter. My best friend had just spent the night and it was now the morning after. My dad had left earlier that morning to go to work, middle of work week and my brother was still over at his friend's house from the previous night. It was just me and my friend that morning, but she had to leave early for a swim meet, so it would just be chilling all day by myself. I was chilling on the couch in the living room, watching newlyweds on MTV, while my friend was changing into her swimsuit. She lived down the street, so her mom was there to pick her up right after she changed. This now left me alone in the house. I continued watching newlyweds while sitting on the couch in my PJs, one of my dad's giant t-shirts, when the TV started changing channels. I immediately looked down at the remote thinking I'd somehow hit a button, but I hadn't. The TV was still changing channels while I was holding the remote. I'm now thinking to myself, well, fine. I wasn't really enjoying this show anyways and was thinking I'd read a book instead. I'm sitting there thinking this to myself when a loud banging noise pretty much erupted right through the wall next to me, banging really loud over and over. At this point, I'm ready to leave the house immediately and walk to my mom's house, but I'm still wearing only a giant t-shirt. I start walking towards my room feeling sketched out when I hear a door slam. As I'm walking down the hallway, I see it must have been my bedroom door. Trying to be logical, I figured it must be a weird airflow kind of thing, but still wanted to get out of the house ASAP. I reach my bedroom door and try to open it, but it's locked. I then decided it would be perfectly fine walking to my mom's house in just a giant t-shirt. My dad's house is creepy. It was around 2015, me and my partner were expecting our first child. So we needed to move fast and get settled somewhere so we could be best for our new baby girl's arrival. We were very lucky and found a lovely, so we thought, old but lovely villa near my family, in our hometown. It was unfortunately a private rented villa, so we were paying large amounts of rent, but we managed to say the least. It all started within the first couple of weeks moving into this villa. We could hear the odd footstep in the attic and bangs in the kitchen. I'll try to explain the villa's layout. 
So you would walk through the front door and end up in the living area. You could walk through the living area and walk into the kitchen where the staircase was leading upstairs. The toilet and bathroom were also downstairs through the kitchen. It was like an added room with the bathtub in the toilet thrown in. Very odd layout to be honest. Anyway, as I stated, it was only a few weeks since my partner was ready to pop any time within the next few months. We sat in the living room. It wasn't the warmest room in the house, so we ended up sitting on the city with our bedding over us. We heard a loud bang in the kitchen, so I ran in to investigate, but there was nothing I could see out of place or had fallen, so I shrugged it off and proceeded to watch TV. My partner then noticed something in the corner of her eye. She says there was a shadow walking in the kitchen, so my immediate reaction was a thief in the garden causing a reflection through the outside window. So I threw on my shoes and looked in the tiny garden we had. Again, nothing was there and it was a silent, cold night. Anyway, weeks go by and still no sign of little baby bump wanting to make an arrival. So we just kept staying at home, watching movies, preparing for the baby, etc. By I'd say the second month, we had moved the flat screen TV into the bedroom. It was just way too cold to be sat in that living room at night even with the fire on and heating on. It just wouldn't get warm. This is where it gets bad. I was always tired even with great sleep and daily nights. Always seemed low in myself and yes I was preparing for a big change bringing a baby into the world and being my first but this was more excitement than fear. I woke up one morning and just couldn't stop thinking about this random old woman who came to visit me in my dream. I mean I've dreamed about many, many people, but never to the point where I was so detailed about this lady. I just assumed it was a very strange dream and I must have got too deep into overthinking it, but it doesn't stop there. I was dreaming about this same lady every single night. She was following me and even speaking to me saying she's trapped in my dream, but never told me how or why. I was always aware that I was dreaming because I would pinch myself and try waking myself up in the dream. The lady always seemed to be there just staring at me from behind a window or the corner or a room or whatever I was doing in the dream. The dream started getting more real and seemed to be longer and again I always knew I was dreaming. Hence the tiredness when I woke up in the morning. My partner started noticing me moving and talking a lot throughout the night. I have no recollection of this, purely her words. She said I would be shouting and moving aggressively to the point where she had to sleep on the floor some nights. This one night, I was woken up by my partner. She was shaking in fear. I said, what's up? She said, what the hell are you doing? Me not realizing at the time, I was actually stood inside the building wardrobe. I panicked and asked her how I got in there. She told me she had no idea, but I was going mad in there like someone was trying to get me. So I jumped back in bed and we swiftly fell back to sleep. We spoke and laughed about the wardrobe incident for a few days, not thinking anything other than me sleepwalking. New environment, baby on the way, etc. Again, in the early hours of the morning, my partner woke me up, panicked, yelling her water's broken. Finally, it was the baby's due date. The hell no, how wrong was we? She had a perfect puddle of water? around her legs and backside, but none of our clothes were wet and damp at all, with no sign of contractions or babies. That freaked us out big time. Why was there a perfect puddle of water on the bed? It had no smell and no colour. So it wasn't an accident on any of our halves, we just couldn't explain it. So we changed the sheets, flipped the mattress etc until we could clean it the next morning. Well that exact same night, I was again woken by my partner's screaming voice. I opened my eyes and I was sat over my partner, just staring at her with no idea why or how I was doing it. At this point, she kicked me into the spare room of the villa. I laid down some spare blankets and slept on the floor. A few days passed without any incidents and still no baby. Around one week late from the due date by this point, I was sitting in the bathroom located downstairs my partner was getting ready for the day ahead, planning a walk to try to force the baby to come. 
I hear three very loud bangs on the front door. By the way, if you look through the front window, you can see all around the house and the neighbors, etc. So I shout, Kelly, see who's at the door while I'm in the bathroom. She replied, I've just looked, it must be the back door. So she came downstairs and opened the back door to nothing or no one there. A few moments later, she was back upstairs and bang, bang, bang again, but it was louder than the first time. So my instinct was someone's playing a prank. I then jumped off the toilet, wrapped myself in a towel and ran to both doors and even ran into the street. Not a single sign of anyone or anything about. I came back in and did it again. I was fuming by this point, absolutely adamant someone was winding us up and hiding but nothing I even watched and looked for ages and nothing. Anyway, it's 14th of January and my baby girl has arrived. It's our first day at home with baby Ella. Nothing more in this world will fill your heart with love than your first baby. So I was just constantly over the top of her Moses basket besotted into her eyes. Days pass with no problems at all and baby is well and settled. By this time, both me and my partner were just exhausted. Night feeds and watch duties just got us both good. So my partner's mom offered to take baby Ella for a night so we could catch up on sleep and rest. We dropped off Ella at her nan's and walked back to the villa. It was around 6 p.m. and was a darkish night. I walked through the door, through the living room, and just as I got to the bottom of the stairs, a bag lump of wood crashed and just missed me. It smashed the kitchen floor that hard, it broke the wood. My partner screamed and shouted, what the fuck was that? And where has it come from? I was in utter shock, it just missed me. I picked it up and we tried debunking it, but that wood did not even match any of the decor or type of wood in that villa. It was very old wood and very old school paint on it. You could tell it was from an older era. So I rang my dad if he would come up as we were scared at this point and he did. He slept that night with us and he insisted he would sleep downstairs even though it was cold. The next morning, my dad's first words were, this villa is 100% haunted and I'm going to bring my friend over who's a medium and can do blessing etc. Long story short, the lady, my dad's friend, came to the villa but refused to come in. I said, come in, you're more than welcome and proceeded to tell her the happenings. She refused to come into the villa and said, I'm not allowed to come in. I laughed, creeped out and said, how come? She looked at me and her body language and speech changed. She said, you need to get out of this place and protect your baby. The gentleman and his wife who owned this place wasn't happy you're here and wants you out. And he's warning me things will get much worse if you don't leave. She gave my dad a hug and left sharpish. We joked about it and cursed a few times, saying we ain't leaving until we find a different home to live. Anyway, the dream started again. The lady was back, but she started chasing me around and shouting at me to leave her house. And in the dreams, I was always in a big glass house and she was always stood behind the glass screaming, get out of my house. Now I decided to take things into my own hands. I started learning and researching how to remove negative energies, etc. But I just didn't find the time nor have the energy to continue. But I started taking odd pictures at night, with and without the flash. Never saw anything out of the ordinary until I decided to shoot a few pictures in the attic. To my disbelief, the first picture I took seemed to be a shape of a dog in the loft and beside it, an old man, or seemed to be a man anyway. It was the shape of a big chap and a big dog. I showed it to the lady my dad fetched to fet bless the house and she said it was the chap who owned the villa over a hundred years ago and he was very protective of the villa. In the end, we decided to leave the house and sofa surf at my parents and my partners for a few weeks until we found somewhere else because the house was just too old and creepy. The wardrobe I climbed into that night to sleep ended up green within a few weeks with mold. It ruined all my clothes and it was one thing after another. We were always drained and anxious in that villa. So we left and never returned. We'll speak about this place now 
when we have friends over and we always wonder if anyone who's moved in since has experienced anything like us. Since we moved, our energies have been better. I like, haven't had a bad dream or slept walked since. It was all 100% linked to that place. We have two children now, so this story is a few years old, but something I'll speak about frequently. When I was younger, about nine to 14, my friends and I had a lot of sleepovers. It was actually great. Most of the time, we were a tight trio. Usually, we stayed at my friend James's house because he had a gaming PC and we would bring our laptops over. Also, he had a projector in the basement. His dad owned and ran a small cybersecurity business or something like that, but there was a room in the unfinished basement full of computers, server racks and whatnot, with little lights all over that were always on. There weren't a ton of lights like you'd see in a real data center, but there would usually be at most half a foot of gap between them. I would often sleep on a couch down there facing this room and I never noticed this happen before or after that night. The house seemed older than the recently built section of the neighborhood with two story houses. This was a more aged one story house that existed when the area was just a small town. James had mentioned more creepy encounters that seemed made up to me like voices calling from rooms with nobody inside during the day, but it never creeped me out and I didn't witness anything but this story. He did tell me that people involved with the mob used to live there in the past and someone might have died there or while living there. So let's cut to the chase. I was lying there with the lights off, pitch black everywhere. My friends fell asleep after we gamed past midnight, but I was an insomniac and still am. I was just looking into the server room and I noticed that something was definitely covering some of the array of little LED lights. It was shaped like a man wearing some kind of fedora. People here have mentioned a hatted shadow man, but this thankfully fits the mob story, so I don't know. He just stood there and I kept staring at it for half an hour thinking there's not a man sized hole in that shelf full of technology. Eventually I woke up my friends and we quickly turned the lights on to check it out. I didn't ask them to try looking at him because I was really just done with seeing that. When I looked in the now lit up server room, I quickly noticed that all of the LEDs were on, even the ones where the man was seemingly standing in front of. There was definitely not enough gap for me to just be making shapes between them. There were more than a few new lights I spotted now, right where the figure was standing. James quickly tried to reassure me that it was nothing even though he would almost brag about creepy encounters before. He probably noticed that I was actually bothered this time. Then we just went to bed after turning the lights out again and I reluctantly laid down to sleep again. I don't remember if I saw the hatted guy again that night, but I was really just trying not to focus on it and get some rest. But I can still remember how that silhouette looked, standing perfectly still with a fedora and a trench coat, with his hands in his pockets, just staring at me. If he had glowing eyes or a different pose, I wouldn't have noticed this figure at all in the first place. When I was 13, my mum and I moved from our suburban city outside of Dallas to her hometown near Waco, Texas. Very soon after we got there, she and I both got involved in the local community theater. She acted and directed, and I did crew work until I eventually took up acting myself. The main theater was actually a corrugated steel addition to a much older brick building. The older building was once a college, but now served as a general art center. The building has a reputation of being haunted. Performers and crew members had all experienced something. Lights getting shut off, whispers behind them, shadow people, etc. My first experience was when I was 13. My mom was practicing on stage as we did most weeknights and I was in the green room. The green room served as a sort of lounge for people who weren't on stage or needed immediately backstage. I was there doing homework. Suddenly I could hear children laughing. This wouldn't be too surprising. 
The couch I was seated on was directly against the exterior facing wall. This was a tin building after all. So it wouldn't be odd to hear children laughing as they played in the empty parking lot of the theater. The laughing persisted, however, and got louder. I decided I would investigate. So I got up and opened the exit door. Immediately, the laughter stopped. There were no children outside or anywhere in sight. I was the only child on set that day as well. I shook off the odd feeling and turned to go back to my homework. As I turned, I saw, in the doorway to the backstage corridor, the silhouette of a girl. She was maybe five or six, estimated by her height and wearing what looked like a prairie dress. She then turned and ran to the backstage corridor, laughing the whole way. I waited a moment to make sure I was still alone, grabbed my homework and ran backstage and just hung out there the rest of the night. I must reiterate, I was the only child on set that day. The play took place in modern times and didn't call for any cast to be wearing prairie dresses. My mum and I were, and still are, pretty open when it comes to stuff like that. So I told her, in the company of another friend and actor. My mom's friend perked up immediately and said that she had seen the girl multiple times and that it was rumored to be the daughter of one of the college presidents who fell off the room of the building and died. She said that the girl was a prankster, that she would turn off the lights in the room you were in or move your things to another part of the room when you weren't looking. However, she only did these things when you were alone. She said that she was once on top of some scaffolding, painting a set facade when the light suddenly turned off and she could hear the girl giggle immediately after the room fell silent. She had to, in the darkness, navigate the scaffolding, carefully climb down the ladder and go all the way across the theater to turn the lights back on. My 11 and a half year old daughter told me a few weeks ago that she saw yellow eyes watching her in our kitchen window. She's a mature, smart girl, so she tried to debunk it as well as consulted with her twin and older sister. They were all up late on a weekend, and so it was after midnight. It was dark out, and the window looks at our backyard, which is small, fenced, and not easy to get into at night without alarming our dog. This window is high up, and so it's not an animal like a dog or anything. It'd be a massive animal to be seen this way. My daughter saw it again and took a picture. It's got red colored on it, covering up junk I have up on my windowsill. She did that after taking a picture to cover it up when she sent it to friends. I haven't tried to debunk or figure it out just yet, but plan to. The thing that's bothering me more is the next part of the story. This is where I'd like you guys to tell me what you feel. She said she saw it in her room too, at the foot of her bunk bed. She drew a picture of what she saw. The moment she showed me it, my heart dropped to my gut, and I didn't feel good about it. The twist to this story is that a few years ago, December 2018 actually, we inherited some items from an older woman who passed away suddenly. She was into some things I'm not 100% sure of, but she had tarot cards, this board, jewels and crystals, and lots of other objects I'd associate with Wicca. I have no clue how she used this board and I don't know why it ended up coming home with us even though I told my husband no. It's still here. I've always had a strange feeling at that window so I don't know if it's related as it's been 15 plus years I've lived here. But as far as the board, nothing seems to be out of the ordinary until this. What the hell is that? My daughter is not the type to make this stuff up. She's not into ghosts, horror or paranormal so it's not an interest. In fact, she doesn't like it at all. She immediately looked like she was going to cry when I told her not to be afraid. I told her she's protected and that she can call on those protectors whenever she needs to. Told her to imagine white light shining down on her from above until she's covered in the light. I just don't want something to grow and feed off us if this is what it feels like it is. Please let me know your thoughts. I really felt you would all be able to tell me I'm just letting my mind get wild and being a mama bear at the same time. Or do you feel negative from it as well? It literally made me feel sick.
When I was a kid, I used to lay awake in my bed with my eyes closed and try to pick the things in my mind. Most of the time, my favorite things to imagine were very large spaces. For example, I would try to imagine what it would look like if you could dig a hole in the ground so big that you hollowed out the earth. It's not as easy as it sounds, and I would have to really concentrate in order to do it. I would start by imagining a hole in the ground about the size of a basketball and slowly try to imagine it growing bigger and bigger until it starts to feel enormous. I wasn't always able to do it, but sometimes I could and the feeling when I was able to do it was very surreal and fleeting. I was never able to imagine anything of that size for very long before it would shrink back to the size of a city block or so. About a week ago, I suddenly remembered doing this and decided to give it a try before bed. I didn't get very far before I started to see very disturbing things indeed. Evil eyes and faces started to appear. It could only really make out outlines with the faces and eyes, but they were very present and intimidating. They looked a lot like the Pennywise clown from the new It movies. I would first notice them from what felt like some distance away but they would flit around getting closer and toad closer until it felt like there were a pair of eyes as close as they could possibly be, right in front of my face. At first, I wasn't able to keep my eyes closed because it was very unsettling and persistent. No matter what I did or thought, they wouldn't go away. The longer I held my eyes closed, the closer and more threatening these entities felt. When I opened my eyes, I could still see a set of eyes in my vision, the same way you might see a dot after staring at a bright light for too long. But with my eyes open, the eyes were much more subdued and were easier to deal with. I didn't feel as threatened with my eyes open. I don't really believe in the supernatural or paranormal at all, so this was pretty confusing to me. I didn't have any doubt that I was perfectly safe in my bed, but it was hard to feel comfortable with these things getting up in my face. I tried several times to close my eyes and just ignore this, but every time I did, they would get more and more aggressive. I started to see mouths full of sharp teeth coming at me, and in the bottom right corner of my vision, it felt like a vicious leech or piranha hybrid was frantically eating at my eye. There wasn't any pain, but it did feel as if my right eye was being forced open, and there were other physical sensations too. I started to hear a high pitch frequency in my head and my skin started to feel flushed. The hair on my arms stood up and I began to shiver. After about an hour of dealing with this, I decided that this wasn't going to go away on its own. So I turned on the TV and tried to focus on something else. Eventually at around four or 4.30, I became so tired that I was able to fall asleep very quickly without further incidents. In the days since, it's been a nightly struggle to fall asleep without these visions bothering me. A couple of days ago, I found that if I focused on picturing the events from a TV show that I had watched early in the evening, I wouldn't have any issues. I would just kind of narrate the events of the TV show and try to picture the show at the same time. At least two nights in a row, that's how I was good to get to sleep. Tonight though, it's about 5am as I'm writing this. I haven't had the same look. I'm writing this on my phone and up in the left and right corners of my screen, I can see two eyes staring back at me, waiting until I stop stalling. I don't know if this is hypnagogic phenomenon. It seems likely because it only ever occurs when I'm in bed trying to sleep. But as I said, I can see the eyes right now and it's taken me at least 20 minutes to write this whole thing. So I know I'm not on the edge of falling asleep at the moment. Not sure what to do about this, and I don't really expect there's a practical solution to it, besides forgetting about it, but I thought you guys might like to hear about it. First time I've ever seen something, I was around eight. I was outside in the street playing with my friends and wanted to go home to get some toys. There was a power blackout in the whole building, so I had to take the stairs. Between every two levels, we have half levels, which have either a garbage tube or a dryer room. 
Are the whole levels with the garbage tube have windows? Those with the dry room are completely dark if the door is closed, which it was. I was on the second floor and as I placed my foot on the first stair to the half level, I saw a white orb flying slowly towards me. It was complete darkness there and as it flew by me and around the corner, it disappeared. I followed it, but it was gone. On the second floor, there was an abandoned apartment. It had the number 11. I asked my parents many times who lived there, but they said the owner was an old lady who died. The apartment was just odd. Whole level would give you chills, but being around it was really strange. Being a curious child, I started to investigate the apartment. I'd sometimes knock at the door, but then hide, but no one would ever answer. One evening, I was right outside the building entrance with two friends and one's grandma and I heard the interphone sound like a button was pressed. As I turned around, I see one one appear on the interphone and then it starts ringing. I got scared and pressed the X button right away. Everyone saw what happened, even grandma. After that, we all stand in front of the interphone and around 10 minutes later, it happens again. The button one was pressed twice and it started ringing. I didn't stop it this time, but no one answered. Next to apartment 11 lived a nice old lady. Her interphone number was 12. She would often complain to my parents that children would knock at her door, ring her interphone and stick gum on her door, but we never did anything to her. I always thought she was hearing the knocking from next door and thought it's her door. She told me she had no connection to apartment 11 and didn't know who owned it. Even months after we stopped messing with apartment 11, she kept complaining she heard knocking and didn't believe us. And then one night a few years ago, as I was coming home, I got the scare of my life. We have lights with movement sensors on every floor. On my floor it's kind of broken. Most of the time it wouldn't sense me moving and I did not bother to make the light turn on. I could open my door in total darkness just fine. So it was like 12 a.m. And I was trying to fit the key in the hole in total darkness when I got a strange feeling. Suddenly, the sensor light turns on, which barely does when I flip my hands in front of it. And on the other side of the hallway, I see a black figure with no face. It somehow reminded me of the grudge, but it didn't see humans at all. Luckily, the key was already in the hole because it was approaching me. I ran inside, shut the door, locked it and didn't sleep that night. I never dared to look through the door. Never saw it again, but I always rush inside really fast now, and I always turn on the light as soon as I exit the elevator. I think I first heard of him in 2017. I'd go on the balcony late at night to smoke weed, I noticed almost every night a baby would cry really loud. Didn't think much of it or care. It was just annoying and seemed like it was coming from outside. Fast forward to the summer of year 2019, when I was paying attention to the sounds of my neighborhood at night. I noticed how weird it is that there's always one neighbor that has a baby who cries so loud. The cry sounds like that one of a newborn would make, so I thought they must be different children. Fast forward to one summer night in 2020. I couldn't sleep and around 2 a.m. I heard a woman screaming outside. I ran to the balcony to check and heard male voices laughing and again a scream. I couldn't see them but I was getting ready to yell at them. I heard the woman running and then silence. They didn't follow. So I stood there for like 30 minutes panicking to see if I heard any other noise and wondering if I should call the police. I was getting ready to go back to sleep when I heard a baby crying really loud. The cry sounded like it was coming from outside of the building in front of mine, but I couldn't see anywhere. Then I heard the cry moving really fast, as if it was running around my neighborhood. I was really confused at that point. I thought maybe it was a cat, but I never heard a cat in my life mimic the cry of a child so well. It kept crying as it went further and further away from my building, and then it went silent. That's when I started paying attention to it. Next time I heard a friend was over and he noticed it as well. 
It was around 12 a.m. at the time, and he thought it was weird for a baby to be outside at that hour, so we went to the balcony to check. To my surprise, the sound was moving again, but it was moving on top of the buildings. It sounded like it was flying. I've heard it a few times after that, including yesterday night. What makes the cry really strange is that the fact that it's always the same tone and sounds like a newborn. I'm currently in high school, so sleep for kids my age is no joke. So I went to bed around 9.30 or 10, just so I'd get the daily amount of sleep that I should. I have no history of any sleeping disorders, sleep paralysis or hallucinations. This happened to me last Friday and I still don't know what to think of it. So when I went to bed the night before this happened, I had this dream where I woke up in this black space where the only thing present was this wooden chair. I sat in the chair and I became stuck in my seat. Scared, I darted my eyes across the room until they became fixated on this pink lanky figure staring directly at me. It had no eyes, nose, and its mouth retracted itself whenever it wasn't breathing. This creature walked towards me and loomed over me by about seven feet of my current height, 5'9". Then it started screaming at me with this naturally high-pitched voice and started screaming some language I didn't know existed. The closest thing would probably be Japanese. Finally, it grinned and bit my neck off. Before my neck was gone, I woke up. It was 5.30 in the morning, so just 30 minutes before my mom usually woke me up for school, since I don't own an alarm clock or phone. So I decided to let her sleep in by turning her alarm off and started getting for my 7.30 Google Meet. Throughout getting ready for classes, I felt extremely dizzy whenever I tried to walk. I shrugged it off due to waking up and my lack of vitamin D and just started doing my classes. The first couple of classes I had were pretty normal, although each time I went to go to the bathroom or get a quick snack, I had that dizziness I had earlier in the morning. One particular moment was when I started eating the ramen I made at lunch. I was alone in my kitchen sitting at my bar eating some ramen. Once I finished, I put my dishes away and started walking towards the bathroom. Now, this wouldn't have been a problem if it weren't for the fact I ran into a wall, causing my vision to be more blurred than before. That's when I felt those long, frisky fingers skip across my back, scratch, scratch, scratch. I got startled and made my way to the bathroom before I could see what was touching me. As I was in the bathroom, I thought that it had to be something that dream I had or just something paranormal. Just due to none of my family in the house having fingers like that bothered me. Not to mention me being alone in my kitchen didn't help my suspicions at all. After that, I went back into my room and started doing my last few Google Meets to get through this otherwise boring day of school. Nothing really happened when I was there. My dizziness even started to slow down. Then, in the corner of my eye, I saw a figure standing by behind my tall, skinny lamp. Now, I couldn't really see much since it was just a glance, but I could tell it was the creature due to a similar height it had to the creature in my dream. Still, its presence in the room was too much to ignore and I was too scared to check. So I stayed in my chair, hoping it would just go away. It didn't go away and started breathing on my neck again. Then it started speaking that Japanese type language. That's when I had enough and got up, and when I turned around, nothing was there. I didn't really see it or feel it after that bad that. For me, it was just there in corners of the room, and never approached my other family members. It was only when I started getting ready for bed that I could 100% say it was gone. I brought it up to my parents, asking if either she or dad had an experience like this when they were younger. They said they didn't and chopped it up to my imagination playing tricks on me. I can't stand it. The thing felt so real and I knew it was there. I just don't know what to think of this, but I thank whoever was reading this.
So my dad died almost seven years ago when I was 15. And this happened three years later. I was close to graduation and especially my final exam in physics gave me a hard time because I really couldn't get to grips with relativity and its shenanigans. Anyway, one morning I was really tired, hadn't slept well, or at all I should say, and I was about to fall asleep in the last row in my classroom, when, just as I was beginning to close my eyes, I heard my dad's voice clear as day say, Hey, wake up and listen. It was so clearly his voice, the tone, the melody, when he was calling my name in a happy manner, it was almost kind of singing. It was him. I was baffled for a moment, but when rebooted after that moment of shock, it was exactly the moment when our teacher dropped a very important hint to what the final exam's theme will be. I would have totally slept through that hadn't my dad woken me up. What's important about this is that with the teacher's hint, I realised that I was learning the wrong stuff. I would have totally failed the final. A less paranormal, but a beautiful end to the story. That same night I had a dream. Me and my dad sat on our porch, chatting, laughing, and, which I remember very distinctly, we were drinking his favourite beer together. So when I was drinking the last drops, the sun was setting, I looked at the chair next to me, my dad was gone. I just once again heard him say, hey, wake up. And that's the exact moment when my alarm clock began ringing. When I was six years old, in 1996, we moved from Kansas to an old house in the country on my great grandpa's property in Oklahoma. We lived there for about seven years and had many experiences, but there were a few that stand out and give me chills just thinking about it. Like I said, the house was old. It was a shotgun style house that was built in the 1920s. It had been vacant for years before we moved in and was packed with my great-great-grandparents' belongings. It was me, my dad, my two little brothers, and my big sister. My uncle and great-grandpa lived in a house just down the road from us. There were many times we felt someone or something was there with us throughout the years. Weird noises and voices were pretty frequent. Twice when I was alone, I heard a woman whisper my name. She whispered right in my ear and swore swore I felt her breath on my back. I found out years later that the same had happened to my little brother. We often smelled a woman's perfume and cigar smoke, even though no one smoked cigars. Another experience I had was when I was sitting in the chair in our living room watching TV, with my leg laid over the arm of the chair. Out of nowhere, my leg flew back towards me as if someone had slapped it. I looked around to see who was there, but I was alone. My dog didn't like coming into the house either, which scared us more than anything. We often left the front door wide open during the summer because we didn't have air conditioning. She would growl and bark as if she could see something in the house, and then run out the door as fast as she could. It was weird. When we finally moved out, we returned a few months later to grab a few things, and this is when the craziest thing happened. We were all sitting around the living room telling stories and reminiscing about our time there. My sister was telling us about all the times she saw shadow figures throughout the house, which was news to me as I never witnessed anything quite like that. We asked her where she saw the shadows, and she pointed above our entertainment centre, and said that was where she saw them the most. On top of the entertainment centre was a set of speakers that had a stack of papers on top of them. The papers had been untouched for years and covered in dust. I looked up to where she pointed, stuck up my middle finger to flip off the ghost and told her to fuck off. Right when I did this, the stack of papers flew off towards me. It was like someone took their hand and slid all the papers off really hard. This had confirmed everything we were just talking about. We knew it was listening. We knew that it knew us. We all ran out of the house laughing in shock at what had just happened, too scared to even go back to close the door. I still get chills thinking of that day, and I can still see the papers flying. Crazy. My dad now owns the property and lives in the house where my great-grandpa lived. 
My little brothers live in the house we lived in, which has, ha has been updated since. I haven't heard of anything like this happening since, but every now and then, I still feel like someone is watching me while I'm there. My dad said he had the house blessed many years ago. My mom swears that there has been a spirit following my dad since before we were born, and that every house we lived in was haunted. But I can't say that I believe this is true anymore. I hope not. I lived around this pond for over 18 years, and saw it go from being a small farm pond surrounded by a field and deep forest, into a pond sandwiched between three huge neighbourhoods and a pool, only shielded by a thin layer of wood surrounding it. As far as I know, the pond was built in the early 1900s and had two barbed wire fence lines running through the pond, creating a cross. Why run barbed wire through a pond? There were two very old houses to the right of the pond and a neighbourhood about 100 yards through the woods to the left. Growing up, the pond was sort of our local legend and every kid refused to go explore it. Fast forward 10 years and I was an avid fisherman who would spend every day after school trying out new waterways in my area to try and find the hottest fishing spots. None were as convenient or plentiful as this pond, which I ended up at just about every other day. My first strange occurrence here was one summer night when I stayed out past dark to try and get a few more bites. When all of a sudden, the light flooded from behind me as if a big truck had just parked with its brights on. I immediately turned, thinking possibly a car had just parked in its driveway at the houses, about a hundred yards behind me through the woods. Nothing was there. And from this angle, there was no way headlights could have travelled like that. I decided that was enough for tonight, and left out the trail leading to the nearby pool parking lot. The second one was months later, but a very eventful evening. As I was walking down the trail from the pool to the pond with my fishing bag on my back, I felt clear as day my backpack got pushed from the side, as if someone was trying to spin them towards me. This happened in the exact same spot as where I was standing when the light had hit me. I stood there for a second and looked in the water to see if maybe I had walked into a fishing line or something. To my surprise, there in the water was a small clay statue of Ganesh and a coconut. Now, seeing Hindu in Indian culture was nothing new to me, as the area I lived in had the highest population density of Indian people in America, and many of my lifelong best friends are Indian. But what shocked me was if something wanted to get my attention and say, check this out. Honestly, this was pretty comforting as I went from being freaked out from being pushed to being amazed and intrigued by what I believe it was pointing me towards. Third story, this is more of an explanation about that particular spot that every occurrence seemed to happen at. The spot was just a little clearance in the brush where you could fish from it and was about a six feet by six feet area where grass didn't seem to grow. And it had an exotic looking tree that was clearly not native, hanging above it about 10 feet off the ground. In this spot, there was almost always a small animal hanging out, which would never take its eyes off of you until you got within three feet of it. Usually a bunny, but often a squirrel or bird. If there wasn't an animal there, there might be some kind of object. One time a knife, strange pieces of old wood, coloured rocks, and one time a $500 watch. It was as if someone was just coming and purposefully leaving strange things in the spot, or as if things were spawning here like a video game. Oddly enough, I was never freaked out by this spot, and actually would just go there with friends and hang out on nice days. It had sort of a nice aura around it, and looked so interesting that it was hard not to appreciate. This is the last experience I've had at the pond, and by far the creepiest or craziest. One day me, a buddy of mine and a couple girls headed up to the pond to hang out after school. While hanging out, conveniently at the same spot, we see a small child three to five years old come running from the old houses on the other side of the pond to us. Concerned, we ask the kid what he's doing, where his parents are and all that. The kid seems very disinterested in why we're asking him, 
and keeps asking us questions like if we're kids or if we're grown-ups. You know, typical kid stuff. When all of a sudden, he turns the other way and starts talking to someone that is 100% not there. The person he's talking to is also seemingly trying to get him to go back to his parents, as the kid seems to be protesting against this, saying he wants to play with us instead. And this is the craziest part. The kid starts barking towards the water and pointing and says, Look, it's my dog. Do you see him? As he's pointing straight towards the centre of the pond, we ask where his dog is. He's in the water barking at me. That's where he drowned a year ago. All of us stood speechless for a second and then took him back to the other side of the pond where his dad met us and took him home. I know kids have wild imaginations and often imaginary friends, but this didn't seem believable. It genuinely seemed like he was talking to a fifth person who was not there and was responding to whatever they were saying. I almost feel as if this one specific spot at the pond was some kind of video game spawn point where when walked by a random event, is triggered. I have half a dozen other crazy stories of things I've seen at this spot, but these are probably the best ones for a post like this. A month ago, I had a Teams meeting with two classmates who were on the same computer in the same room. Three computers in the call. Me, computer A, computer B with both of them on the video and audio, computer C next to them sharing screen of our work with microphone and sound completely turned off. I was hearing a sound that at first sounded like the TV in the background, so I didn't pay attention to it, but after a couple minutes the sound started to get weirder, like deep men voice talking gibberish. The sound was a bit glitchy and I couldn't understand words, so I asked them, where that was coming from and if they could turn it down a bit. They told me there was no TV and they in fact did not have a TV at their place and that they were completely alone. They told me they could close the windows but the sound coming from the windows would be cars and they didn't hear anything resembling what I described. They did and I still heard the voice. So I sent them a video of what I was hearing and they told me they had no idea where the sound was coming from as they can't hear it in real life. The voice continued to appear repeatedly during the call. It was pretty loud, almost as loud as their voices, but really unclear when the voices were really clear. We had a test with one of my friends stepping two meters away from the computer and talking normally, and I wouldn't hear her, so it cannot be a far away noise that they did not hear. To clarify, the apartment was totally silent except for her and me talking. No one else was there. They didn't hear the voice coming from their microphone at any time. It was just me hearing it from my computer coming from their microphone. I used to live in a house on Camp Pendleton that was haunted by a kind man. Or at least that's what I think. I have many stories about the man I call Robert. But one thing that will always stay with me is when he would wake me up from nightmares. The summer my husband was deployed, my nightmares became an, an every night thing. One night, I was having a nightmare and the reason I woke up was because my bed had been shaken, as if someone had kicked the side and the fire alarm went off one time. I remember waking up freaked out and trying to figure out why the alarm went off and why it just beeped once and not again. The next day I called the maintenance over to check the alarms and was told everything was fine. This became an almost nightly occurrence. I would have a nightmare and be woken by one beep of the fire alarm. I feel like he was trying to watch over me and it brought me an odd sense of comfort. We moved in 2020 and after telling my new neighbour one night what happened, my husband opened up and told me the same happened to him. He said he was scared to tell me but on the nights I was not there, he had nightmares and the alarm went off once. I had never told anyone until this night, so we were shocked to know this happened to both of us. Am I crazy for thinking he was helping me? In a way, I miss the weird little things that were always happening around the house.
My boyfriend and I go to bed at a certain time every night. We have a routine. Lock everything up, lights off, kick all four cats. They all have bells on their collars, and the collars are kind of loose every time they jump we hear it. Out of the room, and make sure our two dogs, one sleeps in the kennel and one on the bed, are in the room. So basically nothing changes, so I'm 100% sure there was no cat in the room at the time. Well, everyone was in their spots. I get into bed, put the blanket over myself, and maybe 10 minutes pass by. When it feels like a cat jumped onto the bed and is by my feet. So I sigh and start running through the names so they can come towards me. But the feeling disappears and my boyfriend asks me what I was talking about. I'm like, there's a cat in here. I swear I just felt it. I sit up, turn the lights on, and look in any spot that I know can have a cat in it, and nothing. Let's just say it freaked me out enough to go past our bedtime and watch TV. The dog that sleeps on the bed was by my stomach when this happened, and the other dog was in his kennel with the door closed. My boyfriend didn't feel anything, even though it felt like it jumped up from his side of the bed. And in the morning, there was no cat to let out of the room if there was one stuck in there.